I'm back in Maine. And uh, I expect to be in the Baxter State Park region. Never been there, but I've heard some really good things about it. In the north central section of the state of Maine is a wilderness area like no other. Baxter State Park is a completely wild preserve with over 209,000 acres of pristine wilderness. It's also the home of Mount Katahdin, which at 5,268 feet is the largest mountain in Maine. But rather than take the paved road to the park, I decided to take a little tour on a logging road and check out a little place just outside its boundary. I spotted something on a map and was curious as to what Omaha Beach campsite was like. And as usual, curiosity got the best of me. The road coming in was a little bit rough. However, I got a feeling it gets a little bit worse. Bumpy! <laughs> to call this a road is being kind. It's really a roller coaster. Ouch. It's not getting any better. Ooh, ouch. like a washing machine in the inside of my trailer right now. Oh man, this can't be it. Oh no. How do I get out of here? I gotta check this out. It can't be right. This is the only place I can find a camp. Right next to the, uh, the pit toilet. But the problem is, the beach is actually this way. Down that road. So this is Omaha Beach. Oh, it looks okay. And over here, in the background, you see picnic tables. So those are 
the official campsites. But here's the problem over here. And up in the background there, it's a sign that says unloading area, no parking. So I cannot park by the campsite. I can't get in here. And if I can't get in here, well, then I guess I can't use the campsite. So there's a bit of a challenge there. It's for walking in tents only. I didn't know that. Now I know. But there's another challenge with this. Okay, first of all, it says campers must register within 30 minutes of arrival. Well, guess what? I'm not because it's going to take me 30 minutes to decide if I'm actually staying here. Now, what do you get? Well, I, I can't camp out here because I can't bring my, uh, my trailer out here. Um, and for non-residents, it says right there, it's $13.08 a night. <laughs> like, not $5, $10, $15. No, it has to be $13.08 and you pay in cash? This isn't this isn't making any sense to me at all. So I'm not sure. Uh, I I don't have exactly thirteen dollars and eight cents. I'm probably going to have to give them a twenty if I stay. But what am I paying for? I'm certainly not paying for road maintenance. That was the worst road I've been in this part of the country. Period. It was terrible. So. A uh, little disappointed. I don't get to camp in the campsite. So if I'm not camping in the campsite, what am I paying for? You know what I mean? Anyway, I got to go back, sort of figure out if I'm going to stay a night or... Because uh, it's getting late in the day now. Do I want to start all over again? Is it getting too late? I don't know. I'm going to have to decide on it. Okay, so I decided not to stay. It's just not worthwhile. It's not worth, you know, it's just not worth the, the hassle. Um, I shouldn't have been here anyway. It was my mistake. I didn't do my research properly and I'm paying for it. So lesson learned, um, don't go off on a whim on somewhere you've never been because it can bite you in the butt doesn't work out as you thought it would. Now I just have to make sure I can get out of here without damaging an axle as this road is so bad. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay well I think I found a place that's a little bit of a compromise. It seems relatively quiet. It's off a turnaround. It, it's not an official campsite um, but there's no, nothing to say that I can't camp here. And there's a fire pit but unfortunately there's a million black flies as well so i'm going to talk fast uh i i know i've got my deep woods off which might help a bit uh, i don't know where my mesh hat is i really wish i had that right now but anyway i'm going crazy there's there's too many black flies here i gotta unhook and get into the trailer where it's a little bit more protected ah, stop talking oh yeah things have moved about Oh, there's so many bugs. Yeah. Everything's on the floor. No surprises there. Oh, I gotta shut the door though. There's far too many bugs. And deer flies. Look, right there. That's the scary... The deer fly. The most evil. Go away. In the morning, I checked out the pond beside my camp, but it was too swampy to get a kayak in. Well, that was okay for the night, but this isn't a campsite. Hopefully today I'm going to find something that's, that's a little better than this. I mean, yeah, I guess technically this is boondocking, but uh, it's not really the experience I'm looking for. Too many mosquitoes. The 
logging road was a mess, so it was a great relief when I reached this well-paved road into Baxter Park. The preserve was actually a gift to the state of Maine from former Governor Percival Baxter, under the strict condition that it remained wild. So it's no surprise that when you enter the park, the pavement disappears. Although camping is allowed here, it's only with severe restrictions. Most sites must be booked in advance, but since I didn't have a cell signal, I took a chance at the gate. As I was towing a small camper, my choices were limited, but I managed to get a space at the Able campsite. A little bit of a tight fit, but I'm in. Well, I now have a nice little campsite, one problem solved, but before I even go out to kayak, there's another problem I have to deal with, and that's these absolutely insane black flies. They're everywhere, they're in huge clouds, and I tried the deep woods off, it did not work. I, I tried the thermocell, and it didn't work either, especially if I'm walking around. It's great if it's a sheltered area, but uh, these are just totally insane black flies. So I've got another one I'm going to try. It's called Picaridin. Picaridin, I think I'm saying that right. 12 hour relief. I am trying it right now because I can't stand it anymore. Okay, here we go. Oh. Don't breathe. Oh, okay. Hey, they're still around, but they're not biting. Oh, okay, well, let's try a little bit more here. They like to go for the ears. Maybe I look like a flower or something, I don't know. Oh, okay, let's hopefully that works. If not, I've got the old standbys, the head net, and the bug jacket. I'm going to get out in that lake no matter what. No bugs are going to stop me. Seems the bugs were really interested in the camera's windscreen, also known as a dead cat. So if you happen to have a dead cat handy, bring it along as a decoy. Well, no big surprise, when I was all ready to kayak, it started raining. So I'm just going to hang out under the awning here for a little bit and see if it lightens up. But the good thing, there's not as many mosquitoes. I guess they don't like to get wet. But I want to get out eventually, so hopefully it's not going to be too long. Well, mostly apart for tents and cabins, some of the sites do feature lean-tos. For the price of a campsite, which is around $34, you can reserve a lean-to as a bed and a shelter. But you'd better bring a bug net. Now although the price is a little high, look at the picture postcard view you can get. This is truly an unspoiled environment. But don't drink the water like I did. Boil it first. So let's face it, Baxter State Park in Maine is not for everybody. If you own a dog, sorry, no pets allowed. Got a motorcycle? Nope, you can't get through the gate. Big RVs? Uh-uh, just the little guys they let in. And I, one thing I absolutely love, there are no generators allowed. This is a quiet area. It's back to nature. There's no plug-ins, there's no electrical, there's no water hookups, there's no sewer. Um, there's no Wi-Fi, so yeah, if you like to go back to nature, this is the perfect spot. I just wish there was one other thing they banned, and that was mosquitoes because they're crazy here. And black flies, get rid of them. Yeah, I guess that's nature. You gotta deal with it. Ugh. Now with all those things that you don't have at Baxter State Park, the question would probably be, 
what do you get? In May, at least, you get one of the most lush forests in all of North America. You get blueberry flowers ready to transform into fruit. A proud red trillium. And a shy painted one. Lady slippers, pretty in pink. And countless other little jewels encrusted on the forest floor. This basket of interwoven leaves that cradle the raindrops is from one of my all-time favorite wild plants, the fern. There are at least a dozen species native to Maine, and Baxter has most of them. But a fern nestled beside a babbling brook it is pure heaven. All this vibrant vegetation gave me inspiration for my next meal. Blushing bell potatoes, fiddlehead greens, and a can of sweet and tangy beans. Now I did not forage the fiddleheads, but bought them from a roadside stand. After blanching, they were fried in butter. The beans were just heated up to make the perfect campsite meal. Ah, that looks so good. Baked beans from Tennessee, fried potatoes from Canada, and local fiddleheads fried with butter. Oh, that's so great. Got to try the fiddleheads first. Whoop, they're fiddling around my fork here. It's kind of like spaghetti. Mmm. They melt in your mouth. Complete meal. Protein, carbs, and all the good stuff that's in fiddleheads. Must be vitamins. I don't know. It just tastes great. Mmm. Well, it's getting late. It's time to hit the hay. But before I go to sleep at night, I love to read a good book. But I don't always have a good book to read. And I think the last time I did a book review was about a year ago. And there's a book I really didn't appreciate. But now I have a book I absolutely love. It's called Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Now Robin is a Native American. She's indigenous. And so she brings to that book that rich culture as well as that storytelling aspect, that, that history of the North American indigenous culture. But she's also a scientist. She's a botanist. She studies plants. Reading on the cover here it says, Indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teaching of plants. Now it's also about environmentalism, but don't let that scare you. This book is not one of those books where they just give you the hard facts and they they give you the graphs and they give you the doom and gloom. They make you feel guilty for being human because we've destroyed the planet and we're really not doing much about it. That's not what this book is about. This book is about healing. There is no guilt. There are so many things to celebrate. Little things like wild strawberries. She just loves them and pecans. There's so many things she gets and gets from the uh, from the world, from the wildlife, from the wilderness, and she wants to show you how to appreciate that a little bit more. I love this book, and it it sort of teaches you to only take what you need, and only take what is given, and give back. We really need to give more back in this world, and this book will help you find that. Now well fed settle in for the night. And despite the false start, I eagerly anticipate what tomorrow will bring. But this video is running a little long, so how about I split it into two parts with this just being the intro. I sure hope you'll follow me in the morning as I continue my adventures in Baxter State Park. Sweet dreams!